you know, in the past we've wept and fasted in the fifth month. Should we keep doing this? You know, we really want to honor God. We really want to do the right thing. Um, let's, let's make sure that we, we have our, our fastings and our weepings lined up properly. What kind of answer do you expect for a question like that? Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, this is Zechariah saying, interesting, no word comes to the priests with their irrelevant question, but it comes to Zechariah saying, say to all the people of the land and to the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month during these 70 years, did you really fast for me, for me, when you eat and, and when you drink, do you not eat and drink for yourselves? Should you not have obeyed the words of the Lord proclaimed? through the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around were inhabited and prosperous, and the south and the low land were inhabited, and the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, execute justice, show mercy and compassion, everyone to his brother, do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor, let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother. But they refused to heed, shrugged their shoulders, and stopped their ears so that they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit to the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed, and they would not hear, so they called out, and I would not listen, says the Lord. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations. Now remember, this is after they came back. This is after the 70 years of captivity. And they're asking this completely irrelevant question. It sounds like some of our questions, I think, that we ask in church. You know, we have our, our worship questions, our worship wars. That we, you know, we talk about musical instruments and so forth, and God, and, and God just levels both barrel. But you, you see, he never even answered, answered the question about, oh, should I fast and weep in the fifth month? He never even answered the question. I mean, he said, I don't care. You guys are neglecting justice, and I'm, if, if you don't knock it off, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do again what I did before. See, before the 70 years, you refused to listen to the prophets. I didn't have justice then. I'm not getting it now. And if I don't get justice from you people, I'm going to do it again. Well, let's ask the question. The Church of Jesus Christ. Are we interested in justice? Do we, do we think about it at all? Do we reflect on it? Amos, chapter 5. Hear this emotion. I hate, I despise your feast days, this is 521, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. I will, nor will I regard your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments. Wait a minute. Sounds to me like a lot of worship's going on. Sounds like God should be pleased. Look at what we've got going here. We've got fat peace offerings. We've got all kinds of great singing and music going on. God should really be pleased, and God says, I hate it. I cannot stand you people with your sacred assemblies. How do you fix it? But let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? Yes, you carried suck up your king and she and your gods, God and the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you away into captivity. You worshiped other gods, and then you denied my people justice. See, this is a critical point here. We tend to think that our, our children are our own, that our church is our own. But you know what? If we deny God's people, they're God, it's God's people we're denying justice to. It's his people. That's what God said there in Malachi. He said, look, he said, I hate divorce. I'm upset at you people because you're denying me a godly seed. And you have no right, no right to deny me a godly seed. That seed is mine. And you're taking it away from me. You think it's yours, it's not. It belongs to me. Constantly, throughout Isaiah and Jeremiah, God comes down on the, on the prophets and the priests and the pastors and say, you guys are messing with my flock. Don't forget. It's my flock. 
It's not your flock. It's not your church. It's not your program. It belongs to me. I just have you out there as overseers. And I hope that tonight you take away from you and remember that God in his word gets emotional and angry in his word when justice is denied. And justice is the job of the church. According to what Paul said. Well, first we need to understand that independent justice is strictly impossible. Independent away from God's word. Secondly, be ready to defend and promote the law of liberty. Now think about that. We talk about our founding fathers all the time. I always go back to the founders. Original ten. All good stuff. You know what? They had a different view of the Bible, I think, than we do. They would have no problem calling it the law of liberty like James did. Law of liberty? Yeah, that's the way they saw it. Put Leviticus on the Liberty Bell. And thirdly, pray for the fear of the Lord to fall on everyone. Civil, ecclesiastical, and personal. Let's talk personally here for just a second. Just, just a second. God, for us, has become a, kind of a huge personal vending machine, if you will. Worship Him, it'll make you happy, fix your marriage, whatever. The fear of the Lord is, um, it's kind of gone. Well, if the fear of the Lord doesn't come back on every one of us, we'll see the justice of God as the enemy. That's what we say. Pray and ask for the fear of the Lord to fall on everyone. Because if the fear of the Lord doesn't fall on the magistrates, and if it doesn't fall on the church of Jesus Christ, if it doesn't fall on every one of us, we can forget about justice. It won't come. It will not come. True justice must be preceded by the fear of the Lord. It must be. Yet, uh, 
he kept on saying what was right and what was true, and in God's time, people listened. Although well, for an awful long time, it must have been a pretty lonely job. How do you? Wondering where you put Matthew 18 in this. Like, I, I have heard taught many times. You know, go to the man, take a, take a witness, and then, well, you wouldn't want to take him in front of a whole church. That would be humiliating. Take him to a pastor. Take him to an elder. You know, have we even distorted that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, the question that you heard there is about Matthew 18, where we're enjoying. If you have a problem with someone else go and talk about the matter between you and him alone. And then if he doesn't hear you, then take witnesses. And if he still doesn't hear you, then take it to the church. I believe our present cultural milieu, the present, present cultural Christian setting, does, frankly, that almost make that impossible. Almost impossible. Because we now, we, we go to church not to have our beliefs challenged but to have our beliefs confirmed. And if we don't get our beliefs confirmed, if we don't get ourselves confirmed and affirmed in our churches, we, we find a church that will do it. And um, if, if, if we were really at war in a church, it seems to me that we could do that way too. Because we would be obsessed not with our own personal well-being and self-esteem in the church. Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe I am wrong. Maybe I could be wrong. I need to hear this. I need to hear these people out here. But I think for the most part, anybody can challenge me on this if you want. I think for the most part, the, the present setting in the church, cultural setting, is so far away from that. If you don't confirm me and affirm me and tell me what a great guy I am, I'm leaving the church anyway. You can say whatever you want to You're going to confirm and affirm me, but or or, or not. I can say anything else. Matthew 18 just doesn't seem to work too well in church. It's not because Matthew 18 is worthless. Because we're not at war. It's, it's the club. It is the club. 